again, and welcome to Vance Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. Hi, I'm Carla Garrick. What a pleasant break to the weather. I love weather like this. Yes, this um, is my favorite time of year. I think it's because the first fall in New Hampshire that I lived here, I was just like, oh, what is this what gift? Is this? <laughs> this is the well, most amazing place on earth. What's funny is I was in um, the Hooks at Walmart God, when was this? It must have been last week. Because Dan and I went. Ooh, um, someone yelled at us last week. They're like, stop with the chit chat about the weather. Oh, but who we're cares? still going to do it. Um, Dan and I went <laughs> camping in Maine this past week and we went up near Portland. It was fun. Anyways, I was at Market Bat, or not Market Basket. I was at Walmart and Hooksit. I know I was picking up stuff for, something for camping. And then I walked through their outdoor plant section and I was going to post it to share it with people, but then I didn't want to send people on a wild goose chase. Literally all of their outdoor plants. No matter how big or small, because they were kind of ratty looking, we're a buck. What? So I bought like some plant, and I'm gonna th today, this afternoon, like plant them into a bucket because I'm like, wait a minute, there's still at least eight weeks before you before flowering plants are no longer gonna live, and I'm like. Are we not allowed to? I, I always thought I used to buy new flowers in August, but now it doesn't seem like that's the case. So I, I just thought it was funny that like they're getting rid of all the flowers because they don't want to have to water them. Basically, is what they said. Oh, really? Well, I, I when was that? Over the weekend? It was, or no, it must have been on Thursday. I'm okay. gonna guess. I um, yeah, I could do with some more plants. Right. So yeah. I bought some because I still have tons of stuff from the plant sale that hasn't gotten planted because I didn't get it's to too any, hot. any so they're all the nice in the back where it's not too too hot and they seem to be mostly alive so hopefully either this afternoon maybe at third like now that it, the weather's break you can actually go out and do things without like passing out in the yard yes yes and that's uh, what I like about this time of year it's still summer oh you it's still can go swimming sometimes yeah. actually we're doing a big um Ocean Day for my friend Chris yeah, Lopez, that's, our is friend. That this weekend, it's the twenty fourth, I think. Mm. Um, so it's a friend of ours yeah. who uh, broke her spine, and so she's in a chair. But she got this like super fancy, cool new chair that oh, could like go off road. I mean, it could climb stairs yes, and do all this cool neat. stuff. But in years past, because one of the things um, that she has experienced is that when she's in water, it really does release a lot of the compressed pain yep. that happens. Hmm. And so uh, so we started years and years ago, we went to a lake and I remember it just being like really, you know, kind of challenging. It's like, how do you get the chair yeah, on the sand? It's, you it's hard, about, you know? Right? And um, and now she has this like super chair that the community raised, you know, and bought for her. And so we're going to the beach just to just to hang. Well, I should. Yeah. I, I when we were at the Theodore Rico pool, Rico Theater, whatever the heck the name of it is, I can't think today. Um, there did seem. I think they might have the 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 lift, the chair thing. I didn't want to bring it to her attention because it's so late in the season. But next right. year at the beginning of the year, we should make it a point of. I think we should make it a point of making. Uh, yeah, I actually use think the the, um, the YMCA, yeah. also the one downtown, and I don't know about the one in Goffstown, but they also have yeah. one of those chairs. Now you have to transfer, right? And stuff, but I mean, but, but I still, was like, yeah. hey, but if she, you know, yeah. it, it's in the deeper end of the pool, so she could pretty much swim. Yep. You know. Yeah. Right, it's without a major difficulties. Right. Yes. Um, people don't understand. That's my. That was my pet peeve. So I, you mentioned last week that they had redone the parking lot at um West Arena. West Arena. So I was on this I was on this rampage at one point last week to check on a couple things and I did go down and not only did they it's not like they just touched it up. They like totally redid it. And I'm sorry, there are more important things in the city to repave than the West Side Ice Arena parking lot. And part of the things I think about is how many sidewalks are in such disrepair that someone who is in a wheelchair struggles to get from you know point a to point b because it just never seems to be a priority no and again you know i i just i have this level of curiosity where i'm like if we're using funds uh funny money from the federal agencies to do these projects where is the money that is being the budgeted being, for these right. things being and spent I, I did because I mentioned the parking lot to a couple different people, and even Dan said, he goes, well, you know, it might be the situation where it's been on the plan for, you know, five years and five every five years. And I said, you know what, I don't really care what the plan was. The reality is, is the city should be focusing on the things that are 
truly I needed mean, more than well this would be nice it would it's nice to have things that would this would be nice well yeah but we need to fix the roads that are really in bad shape well, i mean also and can we talk about this a little bit so so there's this this would be nice category of stuff mm -hmm. but then there's also not you know I, I i posted something and it relates of course to the community center uh that they're talking about over there on the west side mm -hmm. and um i put up a blog post this morning because there is a there is a meeting tonight 5 to 7 p.m parkside middle school mm -hmm. Please come, whether you're pro or not or for just it curious. or curious or whatever. Let's have the conversation. But the conversation needs to be, are we doing this here based on what? Or, um, and we just got a notice from <laughs> Manch P, uh, Manchester Public, Public Television, television that they'll be there, they'll be there okay. as well. So that's great. Um, but the, the whether we're curious, but the conversation has to be why here? Because here's my point. So a lot of times government will be like, oh, there's this awesome thing we want to do, and we're only going to look at the upsides. But they don't look at the downsides mm -hmm. or the other side of the coin. And so they're not making informed decisions. Mm -hmm. And so by way of example, with this, this neighborhood um, you know, ripping out the garden. So they're taking actual green space mm -hmm. and an actual thriving community garden where wet vegetables and food are grown. And then everyone's like, but this is gonna be great for the children. And I'm like, no doubt. Look, I like kids too. Right. I get it. We want them to thrive. We're all on the same page. The the the, the right. externalities aren't, oh my God, Carla hates children because she doesn't want this center there. I am saying, all right, we want to provide these things for the kids. That sounds like a great idea. What is on this side of the right, coin? Right. So on this side of the coin is things like increased crime yep. around these areas based on Manchester PD's own predictive policing data. There is things like property prices go down when these kinds of centers are put in residential areas. So now we've said, we wanna help these 100 kids over here, but we're actually going to turn a quiet residential middle-class neighborhood into a lower middle-class slum over time. And those things aren't being weighed. So the questions become, how do we look at these things and actually make informed decisions, not just like what happened, where 10 people who work on the project all wrote letters that said, this land is surplus. I'm like, we can all, every single person, anyone who comes tonight, everyone who's involved with this, whether you're for it or against it or just curious, can see with their own eyes that there is a garden there. Yes. So in order for like everyone involved with the project to write on a piece of paper, there's no use for this land. Mm. When the land is in use, belies what is in front of our eyes and therefore it can't be good. Like how, how does it even work? Like I'm like, don't make me suspend disbelief. Don't like straight up <laughs> lie to me and then be like, what, Carla, what? Oh. Just not right. So I hope people will come out at five. And another by way of example, like the weighing up, then people are like, but the kids need this. And I'm like, but what about that veteran who bought his house In on the park place. because he has PTSD that the government gave him. Um, and he was like, I really need this green space. Right. So how do we weigh up the interests of that person? Yeah. How do we say, but we're gonna make this land tax free, but we're gonna provide more services. So, oh, sorry, not only did we depress your property values, but now your, your taxes are gonna go up because someone has to pay for this. I have some additional questions just cause now I'm mad at the city, you guys. Elliott Hospital. Mm -hmm. There was some deal that was done years and years and years ago. We're part of the promise that was made to the city by the city to the people who didn't want it built there was, hey, we're gonna build out this beautiful green space and park. Is, so, this, is this on the river's edge? This wasn't actually that long ago. This is <laughs> since the dog park. Okay, Elliot, Elliot River's Edge is not actually all that old. I'm just saying. It's, okay, so let's is, say in the, in the last, last decade ten, or so they built years. that, and okay. that strip of land between the walking path and the Elliot Hospital, and I only know this because of the dog park search. 
um, was supposed to be green space. That was the deal. You now can it is a here, fence. It's gross. Homeless encampment right, and with graffiti and, it's and always poop just been and like it's abandoned, cars neglected, and, debris and, crap. and so I'm just saying when mm. when 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 these special interests make promises. We'd like to actually see the promises be delivered. So, Elliot, I'm probably going to be looking yeah. a little more it, carefully at that it, as it well. It is something very much that should be looked at. Because I know we had, I think it was shortly after we built the first dog park that we actually looked at that land and we thought, wouldn't that be a nice, large, open... Oh, it's trip? really nice And there. actually, it's funny because I have a friend, Carl, um, who recently moved back here from Kentucky and he is very interested in dog park expanding the dog park um availability in the city of Manchester and it's funny because i got to thinking about why 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 do we categorize it so specifically that like a dog park like the Manchester dog park which is fine and small and it's geared just for dogs like you wouldn't go hang out there if you didn't have a dog, because I'd be, well, what would you do? But why can't a certain park area, certain spaces, very large spaces in parks, be fenced with four foot like chain link? Because and, and oh, then where you could people say, would want that, so we right, couldn't possibly you know, get and it just to them. say this is a park, and you, you put signs up that this is a park where you're allowed to have your dog off leash as long as you obviously have control <laughs> of your dog. I don't know, Tammy. Why are we not allowed to take? Um, dogs at all to any federal park in the state of New Hampshire. No, it's, Actually, when I'm in in the yeah, state house, too. that is a bill. I'm I just going to nullify that well, straight up. I actually am very curious. I said when I get elected in November, I am going to very much put a bill in about the state park system because I don't understand the reason. I don't understand why I can bring Jenny to some state campgrounds, but not other state campgrounds to some state. I can hike with her in some state parks, but not in other state parks. And I just don't, it, I don't even know what the so, impetus of the, so, the, that is. So one of the things we're struggling with as a society is unhealth. People mm. are diseased. They're obese. 10%. 34 million Americans have diabetes. Yeah. Um, I think the obesity rate under children under 13 is o almost 50% now. Um, so, you know, again, maybe like the best thing for for society is for the kids from the west side to have to walk to the east side. I'm just saying maybe like a little sunshine and exercise wouldn't be the worst thing, right? So so we have this, un uh, this disease mm. and we're not addressing any of the core issues. We're just slapping... Yep. Band-aids on all this stuff instead of going, well, maybe we need to go back to the drawing board. And here's a perfect example. When I was leaving the house to come here, mm -hmm. I ran into my neighbor who's an actual physical abutter to this proposed uh, park destruction. And um, he just got back from Alaska and yep. he was in a very rural area that's like eight hours north of Anchorage or from Anchorage. And it's a little hospitality place where the guy had built cabins and he has a, a you know, a little uh, hotel business, I guess, or camping business. And a kid from three miles away showed up at the camp to ask if there was any work he could do, including cutting the grass, cutting trees, uh, you know, general yep. gutter cleaning, whatever, for money. So this kid, somewhere in rural Alaska, walked three miles to go make some pocket money. Yep. That is how you enable children to become functioning, productive, creative, free and happy people. You know how you make people unhappy? You mm. tell them they can't do anything. Right. So I have an interesting topic, <laughs> not completely unrelated, but I just thought it was interesting and I'm gonna, I was hoping that to talk about it for a couple different reasons. So I get emails from Nextdoor. I don't know if you're, if you're signed up in Nextdoor. Uh, no. So it, it's like a, it's an email system. They do have a website. So basically you, it's like Facebook posts, but it's just, it's supposed to be like pocket, it's neighborhoods. In your, yeah. So I get ones, I still get the ones from on um, the Piscataquag area, which because of my house on Parker Street. And then Dan would probably likely get the ones that he signed up for the Mass Road area. And there's all these different pockets. Um, the icky part is 
lately everybody's been saying, why do I keep getting posts from like Amherst? I don't really care. It's not that I don't care. It's just, it's not relevant to my it's life. It's not your neighborhood. Um, and that's just the way this, this platform works. But it is kind of interesting because people will post their lost cat and if it happens to be in your neighborhood or whatnot. And this caught my attention because it was in Manchester and it was originally posted and I could not for the life of me find the original post this morning. So I don't know if it was deleted. I could look further. It's just, I just didn't have time. I saw a post from somebody in the North End saying that they had gotten shot at with a BB gun. Oh, wow. While they were just like walking on Chestnut Street. There was like, I think it was, the reason I know I didn't make it up, I remember the streets. It was Clark and Chestnut. And they were just saying, so be careful. And I want to say it, um, it was two people walking and it was, then other people started reporting and somebody said a mailman got hit and somebody working in their yard got hit. And then as it evolved, it wasn't like metal BBs, it was pellets. Okay. So it's more of a, not that that's okay, I mean, but it's not as physically dangerous. You're not going to get, you know, but I don't know about you, but you get shot with a pe rubber pellet and you're going to know it, right? Never mind the fact that if it gets shot in the eye with a rubber uh, pellet, yeah. you're probably going to go blind. So Seems dangerous. Yeah. As the story evolves, there's multiple people in the North End saying, yes, yes, yes. Then um, they said it was a, um, narrowed it down, a black Honda with two people driving. They couldn't tell, one person said they couldn't tell if the person was sitting on the passenger side out of the car or up through a, uh, um, you know, a skylight. Okay. And then as it goes on between that post and then there was another post where the person said, I saw comments about this thing and they were um, saying it happened over on Melrose Street, which is over more like Candy Road, Holt Avenue. Um, and then Scott Godzik posted on Facebook because he says, on Sunday, 814, there were multiple reports from across the city of a BB gun shooting. Surprisingly, there was no description or warning put out by authorities. Um, there were shots from the cars, houses, to, to houses, to people. Um, one message told us there were shots from a black Honda. If, if we get any official information, we'll release it. Um, if you have any information, please post. And different people were saying, could you please check your ring? Could you please check your security right. camera? Yep. Because if, if you lived anywhere near Clark and Chestnut or apparently on Bremer Street or Elm Street or the Melrose Street or, you know, like there's numerous places, um, there's a chance that perhaps the car could be identified. Now, in reading all this, um, I was a little put off. Um, people in the North End did say that the, they called the some people called the police and the police came and responded. Um, somebody on Bremer Street said they were shot at and that when the police came, they kind of poo-pooed it like, we're not really interested in this. I thought I read some in one of these various um, um, dialogues about somebody said that the cops said, well, they're just kids and, you know, okay, well, that's, that's not what kids do. Kid, you know, like every, somebody commented that, you know, yeah, I remember being a kid and I was fixated. We used to throw eggs and they used to like really cause mayhem in the day with eggs. And he said, and it was an adrenaline rush and it kept getting worse and you had to do more and more and more. And he said, I'm very concerned when there's a kid, if these are kids shooting a, be a pellet gun out of a car, you know, that adrenaline rush is going to run off and it's going to, it could escalate. So I thought, okay, these are very legitimate concerns from a wide range of people across the city that nobody seems to get a, have an answer for. And Scott Godzik posted, and it was what I thought always think is, this is the perfect example of why the police scanner should be unencrypted. Yes. Because if I'm sitting in my house, right, and I happen to be on Facebook or something, and somebody says, I just got shot with a BB gun while I was walking down Varney Street, and I turn on the police scanner, and then somebody says, oh my God, I'm on Riddle Street, and I just got, and they're driving a black Honda, and I am in my house literally at the time these things are occurring, and I see the black Honda, that, then you can I, then the community can identify the person causing the mayhem. To have the police come an hour later or four hours later or days later or whatever the case may be to take a report that you got shot at by a black Honda 
they're not going to pursue that. They're just not. So now we probably still have, and now we've been pre- me probably, and I've probably just contributed to it. We've been, we may have upped the ante on the kids driving around shooting at people with pellet guns. You know, I don't know about you. I don't want to get shot with a pellet gun. I don't want my dog getting shot with a pellet gun. I don't want my house getting shot with a pellet gun. And maybe they are just kids bored doing stupid things that kids do. But the police need to take it seriously, and the police need to stop with this late to the game investigation of crimes. Why can't we know what is going on in our neighborhoods when it's happening? Unencrypt I don't the get scanners. it. Unencrypt the scanners. I do not buy into that this is somehow making it either safer po- for the police or easier for them to uh, re- to solve crimes no, because I, I, everybody on every Facebook page that all you ever read about is they don't respond. The police aren't responding. They are. They don't have the time to come and do. But they're. If you're chasing, if you're. I mean, if I throw the ball and you can see where the ball is and you go pick it up, it's easy. If I throw the ball and you come three days later and I go go get the ball. Right. Well, how are you supposed to find it? So then the police seem like they're probably spending more time chasing than they are just being able to well, easily. Well, and, and, and on top of that, let's talk about, so they took something that was a historic uh, community service. Uh, it was something yep. that both the media used yep. and anyone in the community. There's a long, long, long tradition of people listening to yep. police scanners. Since they've existed, yep. that has happened, right? And so on the one hand, they shut down that avenue to actually have everyone in the community sort of pulling together with yeah. the cops to be like, hey, what's up? Let's figure right. this out, right? So so they shut that down. On top of that, they then added police cams, body cams, yeah. body cams which they are now saying is exempt from the right to know law. So they're basically just roving uh, even, surveillance even units. Even if it's you that's in the ca- video. Yeah, and, and that's another law I will change. So at a minimum, it should be, so police do not have a right to privacy when they are executing their public duties, they are a public servant and they are working for you. Yeah. They can't go around and go, oh, I can't consent to taking a, f- you can't, I'm not consenting. That, that That's not how it works. You have a right to film them. You have a right to take a photo of them. Uh, that's it. And so um, they, they have the body cams, but then on top of that, they're also introduced, you know, and it's weird because Match PD does a lot of like new stuff, like the predictive policing mm-hmm. that they introduced, which is basically going, uh, it's a little minority report-ish, right? Where they go, well, there are always calls from this area, I don't know, Lake Street, right next to the Boys and Girls <laughs> Club, for example. Um, so this is a crime hotspot. So we're going to put police there in order to, uh, to, to drive down crime in those areas. And I think to some extent that does work. It possibly just moves the crime four blocks over yeah. to where you can't predict where the police are going to be because they're very routine in it. So you can tell after three days what's up. So there's that. But then also they just recently started something where they are using the ring yes. uh, data from people. Now, my understanding is it's currently you as a homeowner have to opt in. Dan to- says no. So if it's not opt in, that is a giant problem. Then what the government has done, what your police force has done, what the surveillance state has done, what the Orwellian 1984 problem children are doing is turning every camera in the city, which by the way, they denied they had any. And then it came out there 348 cameras Mm, in the city surveilling who knows what. Um, So now they've turned everyone's private cameras into these surveillance decks too. But then they also don't seem to be solving community crimes. So there's all this surveillance, there's all this stuff going on. No information. But the policing isn't really improving. And how can I uh, I'm not actually. I'll save this for tonight. <laughs> um, so Leave a little surprise for all of you watching the show. Because we're almost running out of time. I didn't want to. So th- you're saying this, and I'm thinking about it, and I'm thinking about our trip. So, like I said, Dan and I went visited Portland on um, Sunday, and we took a little bus tour. We were on this. They have these uh, 
fire trucks that you can ride in the back with. And we were able to oh, take fun. Jenny, which was cool. <laughs> um, so they ride and they take you on this, you know, 50 minute tour of Portland and all their little historic buildings and stuff, which was kind of cool. It's a cool but city. I like what it. I found, I, I was just intrigued and I had to look it up. So Portland has about 67,000 people. So a little bit small, you know, not as large as Manchester, which kind of surprised me because... The greater Portland area is, is bigger. Right, yeah, but I'm just saying it was million. just funny that the the vibrancy of their of that yes. whole downtown uh, waterfront area and the restaurants for a smaller, are really good. Yeah, oh, they're, and, well, they're yeah. number, they're ranked number one in the in the country now. They they compete with San Francisco all the time on the foodie thing. But anyways, we drove around. I mean, so they take you up one promenade through the city. You know, I saw one homeless person. And that, is that true? I think I might have seen two. But it was like one random place. There were some neighborhoods that were you could tell were not as affluent and whatever. But as we came back from our, we, we meandered down from Maine and we came through all the seacoast, you know, little beach towns and everything. And we came through Raymond to get ice cream at Stillwells and then through Manchester. So this brings us through right down Bridge Street. So we're, and now I'm like, now I'm trying to be observant. Okay, you go by the parks in Manchester and you're like, pile a person, pile a person, pile a person. Oh, big pile of people over there. Piles of people everywhere. And I thought, how weird that in all the parks that I drove by on Sunday in Portland, I didn't see that. I didn't see a single panhandler. Um, one that actually really surprises me because Portland not is notoriously bad. Um, maybe, I mean, I know they have that one soup kitchen where a lot of people yeah. concentrate. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, it's just I was not at everywhere. Restoration you know, like, Cafe, and I was shocked at the park across from there. It's just, it was just lumps of people. So, so the reason, in case anyone's wondering why, it's because we never had services, yep. and then we introduced services. And I will leave you with this one thing that I will just keep saying until the penny drops. Whatever you subsidize, you get more yep. of. So if you put more pro poverty programs and drug programs in place, you will get more poor people and more drug addicts. That's, that's how it works. So that being said, if you have any questions, you have any ideas, you want to send us fun pictures, you want to send us hate mail, we hate don't really mail. care. Um, you can email us at manchtalk, manchtalk at gmail.com. Um, Always look to forward to reading what people have to say. And otherwise... Please, please just don't tell me I need to be exterminator or that I'm yeah, the queen of the sewer rats. I'm going to get one of those signs Not that just says, just be people. nice and put it on my lawn. Oh, no, they like to say that. They just don't I like know. to actually do it. I'll actually put a it. be nice sign on my lawn and actually be nice. Crazy yeah. thought. Anyways, that's all we got for the week. Enjoy the cooler weather. And we will be back next Tuesday with more fun and exciting things going on here in Manchester. And hope to see a lot of you uh, Tuesday night at... Parkside Middle. Bye. Bye, guys.